Now to dive right into it, let's just go into the basics of what a candlestick says. You have four key points in the candlestick that tell you a lot about what the price of the current market is doing over that candlestick. And so all these four points mean is this is where the market opened when the candlestick was made. And then the low and the high were the extreme prices that it hit. And then where it actually ended up closing and so what we have here is this is called the body of the candlestick just showing you where the open and the close were and then these wicks here just these lines those show you where the extremes of the candlestick went and so how one of these form in real time is the market will be opening here it'll move around you'll see the body of the candlestick moving and then as it starts to go up you'll see a wick started to make and the candle could have gone all the way up to here, hit these highs, and then come back down here and close. And so that's how a candlestick would get made. And because this candle is green, that's how you determine that it is a bullish candle. It, that means that the price opened lower at the body and then closed near the top. If you switch that to red, that means that it is a bearish candlestick. It opened up at the high, of the body and then closed towards the low of the body and so that's meaning that the price went down overall over this candlestick's forming and so how this would look in real time it would open up here punch up to the high up here and then start selling off and then it would actually retrace a little bit and then end up closing at the close here and so that's how you read a candlestick and so if you jump into an actual chart you can start to see where the market has gone up and where the market has gone down. Generally, if you see a bunch of green candles like this, that means the price is going up. And you can see right here, the market is currently live and the market is going up and down and producing those bars in real time. And then of course, when you see a red candle, that means that the price went down a lot. And so this is how you start to piece together the swings of the market, where it's going up, where it's going down, and so a big thing is candlesticks represent a certain amount of time depending on what chart you're looking at. If you're looking at an hour chart, each candlestick represents an hour. But for this chart right here that we're looking at, this is a one minute chart. And so you can see the candlesticks form pretty quickly. There's a little timer right here counting down how long till the candlestick forms. And so what that shows you is each candlestick represents what happened in one minute and so that's how you tell the difference and so that can be very important with looking at a candlestick because if i go to a 15 minute chart you can see the candlesticks look a lot different and it will take 15 minutes for one of the candlesticks to form and so a candlestick will really determine what kind of strategy you do a really slow long forming candlestick like even a daily candlestick where one candlestick represents a day that will be a long style of trading where it takes multiple days for a trade to play out now if you want fast trades like me well you can jump into a one minute chart where trades can last a couple of minutes or just a couple of hours now when it comes to analyzing a chart using candlesticks there's a few key things you want to be looking out for. A big thing is seeing where the swings of the market are. So where the swings of the highs and the lows are, because what these tell you is what kind of trend that the market is in. So right now, if you zoom out and kind of just blur your eyes even, you can just piece things together and say, okay, the market's kind of swinging like this. And what that, can tell you is, hey, the market's in a downtrend. And a really clear way of doing this is looking at the highs and the lows of the market. What signifies a downtrend is if the market is making lower highs and lower lows. Essentially, every new low that it makes is lower than the last one. So it's continuously making a stair step pattern down. And on the flip side, an uptrend is when the market starts making higher highs and higher lows. So you can see right now the market is currently looking like it's switching to 
an uptrend. Now, a big thing when it comes to trading is understanding the structure of the market. That's what they call technical analysis. You can draw trend lines, support levels, and channels off of what the candlesticks are telling you. And this can allow you to understand what the market is doing so you can know where the market will potentially go and then trade based off of that. And so the first really important one is just a trend line. It's just taking the swings that the market is having and matching those together. So the market has an initial swing up here and then you can see the market touches this area three consecutive times. And so as the market is continuing lower, you can either take a trade off of that trend line if you think it's gonna keep going lower or once that trend line is actually broken and the market breaks out of that trend line, you can say the downtrend actually might break and then we might start into an uptrend. And so that's a really key way to analyze what the market is doing. And then with trend lines, you can make a channel off of that if you see the market bouncing. So all you do is you take your trend line and generally you have a channel tool for this, but all that is is making a parallel trend line on the low end. And here we can see that the market pretty much bounced off of the low end of this trend line, giving us a pretty clear channel. And so the same thing happens here. Once it breaks out of that channel, the market has a good chance of starting to change that trend. Trend lines and channels are essentially directional support and resistance. And so the other key thing is drawing horizontal support and resistance. And all you want to do for that is see where the market has bottomed multiple times and reversed off of. And so you can do this either in where the market bottoms or in an upwards trend. And so here, this is where the market looks like it's bottoming. And you can see that it, the market's just looking at the candlesticks. It's kind of chopped around here before taking off. And so going forwards, I would analyze the chart and add a support level here because the market has sold off into this level and then bounced. And so it's found support in this level. There are buyers down here buying the market, thinking it's oversold and betting that it's gonna go higher. Now, the reason why I use a box here instead of just a line is because Support acts like a zone. It's an area of value. When you're analyzing the market, you do not need things to be precise and an exact price. You do not need to see the market make a perfect double top to make a resistance level. As long as you see the market bounce in an area that's roughly the same spot, you can say that, yeah, there is resistance up there. And every time the market comes up here, well, it's likely that it sells off again. And so it's going to be good to bet that it's gonna go lower when it reaches that area. Because when it comes to the market, you don't know where it's gonna reverse or what it's gonna do. All we're trying to do is make logical predictions that increase our odds. At the end of the day, trading is essentially taking a chance on something happening. And all we're trying to do by analyzing the chart is stack those odds in our favor. Now, when it comes to the market, it can have a lot of different type of trends. Over here, initially we had a pretty wide, broad downtrend. And then we had an area of consolidation where the market was just kind of chopping back and forth in a horizontal range. And so this is essentially a sideways channel of the market just bouncing off the lows, bouncing off the highs, and then eventually breaking out of that channel. And then the market has gone into an uptrend here, but it is a very tight uptrend. You can see that if we put a channel around this, it is in a very tight upwards channel, bouncing between the highs and the lows of that channel as it works its way up, versus it was very wide and the market had a lot more movement. And so when you're looking at the chart, you wanna to start to realize these things and analyze that, okay, the market's in a very wide trend. What can I expect it to do once it either breaks that or continues? And if it's in a tight trend, okay, what does that mean? Generally, if you're looking to trade, you're gonna want the market to have a wider trend because when you're trading, you always want the market to have movement. If I bet that the market is gonna go down right here, well, there's a good amount of movement 
potential that the market has. But over here in this uptrend, if I bet that the market's gonna go up, let's say right here, well, there's a lot less movement to the upper end of this channel making my trade not as favorable. And so understanding the actual vertical movement in the chart will help your trading a lot. Now, a big thing when it comes to candlesticks is candlestick patterns. And so what we have is your basic bearish and bullish candlestick. But then what you can do is a lot of the time, as we've just been looking at the chart, they're not gonna look like that every time. You can have a lot of different looking candlesticks and some of the bullish one candlestick patterns can look like these right here. And all these generally mean, if you think about what the chart was doing when it formed this, is for this candlestick right here, is the market opened up here, sold off, and reversed higher. And so all that's showing you is the market sold off and then reverse. And so it's a mini reversal in the market. And so that is how these patterns can help you easily identify what the market is potentially going to do. And as you get into more complicated patterns, like three candlestick patterns, generally a lot of what these are telling you is the same thing. If we look at this morning star pattern right here, is all it's telling you is the market sold off, kind of found a little bit of a chop range and then reversed. And if you think about that, that is exactly what is happening on our larger chart here is the market sold off, had a little bit of a chop and reversed. If we zoom out to a larger time frame chart, you can see that downtrend is shown by one large red candle, a neutral candle, and then a large bullish green candle. So that shows you that down move and then consolidation and up move that we have on a lower time frame. And so that's what using these candlesticks patterns can do is they're showing you the ins and outs of what the market is actually doing on a smaller time frame. A really good candlestick pattern to illustrate that is this three candlestick reversal pattern right here. What these candlesticks are telling you is that they're going up in a nice concise pattern and then all of a sudden the market rips back lower. And so a few things that you can see here is, well, first off, the market's essentially in an uptrend and then it breaks that uptrend and then reverses back lower really quickly. And so first off, breaking an uptrend is a reversal signal. And then on top of that is check out how fast this sold off. The market took a while to go up that much price and then all of a sudden it just rips back lower and that shows you momentum to the downside and it shows it gives you more of a signal that it's more likely that the market is going to reverse and so the close of this candlestick was way below the lows of the last three candlesticks and so that shows you a lot of strength in taking out those candlesticks and so looking at the chart this is where it's really important to see where those closes happen because you can see here we have some really big bearish candles and really big green candles, but the overall price of what they are breaking is not much. You can see that the market's just kind of going back and forth here versus making a very large three moves up and then a massive move down like that pattern. Now let's piece this all together and let me show you how you can actually analyze a chart and find potential trade areas. Now, the most consistent thing I found is using a higher time frame to find support and resistance levels and larger, bigger picture of what the market is doing, and then zoom into a smaller chart and then enter in a trade based on that. And so for me, I just zoom out to a larger time frame and see, okay, where are the support and resistances? Where are the trend lines and channels? So what is the market doing? And so right here, the market's currently trading that down here. And as the market came down to this area, selling off this morning, well, you can see if we look back to the left side of the chart, the market has bounced off of this area before making a large rip higher and a big sell off and then a punch back lower. And so here it's again, you can see it's back into this level. And so going forwards, when you see the market starting to get back to that area, what you're going to want to draw a support level because you want to say, hey, the markets bounce in this area multiple times. When it comes back to this area, 
we can expect it to find support again. And we can already see that happen once yesterday. The market came down in this area and it reversed off of it. And now it's come back again. And we do have a slight reversal off of there right now. And so this is how you can start to identify key areas in the market. And then of course, another big thing, the market had a pretty clear downtrend here on a larger time frame. The market was kind of bouncing off of this area and now it's broken that. And so we can expect just like on a smaller time frame, the market to potentially break this downtrend and change what it's doing and go into an uptrend. Now, of course, just because we have a downtrend broken does not mean that the market is going to immediately just reverse way higher and go into a massive uptrend. It could totally just bounce around here for a while, keep going lower or keep going higher and then sell off. You never know what the market's going to do. It can always do something that surprises you. So again, this is all about trying to put the odds in our favor and predict what it's going to do and then set things up for a trade and then predict what it could do and then hopefully consistently profit from that. But of course, you're not going to be right every time. And so when the market comes to these larger levels, I then zoom into a smaller time frame to get a more accurate entry and look for those candlestick patterns because on a smaller time frame, you can see what the markets are doing and you can get a more accurate entry and you can profit from a bounce that the markets made off of this support level. Now you don't need the market to make a massive move up to make good profits. We don't necessarily zooming back out to a larger time frame need to try and catch a massive move of the market bouncing off of this level, right? All we are using this big level for is the likelihood that the market finds some level of support here. And maybe it's just a small bounce right like this. Maybe the market just comes up here, bounces a little bit, we profit and then it sells off again. And that's totally okay. When you're trading the market, you do not need to know what the market is doing at all times. You do not need to profit from every move that the market makes. You just need to find one strategy that you can consistently repeat over and over to make money in the market. A lot of people get into that trap of saying, I want to always be in the market. If the market's going down, I want to make money. If it's going up, I want to make money. And on the reversal of that, I want to make money as well. And that's not the reality. You just need to focus on a couple things. And so what I found I like to focus on is looking for reversals in the market where the market comes down, kind of chops a little bit and then rips back higher because I have found you can get a really good risk reward ratio. A lot of the times I risk about one to make three because if you get in somewhere down here before the market punches up higher, well, you're risking not that much for a potential a lot more profit. And so that means you don't have to be right very often. And that's what you want to do when trading. You want to set yourself up for success. And a good risk reward does that very well. Now I have a simple checklist that I like to do when finding trades, because that's what you want when trading. You want a strategy and a plan that you consistently follow. So the first thing in that checklist is finding that support level off of a larger time frame, and then zooming into a smaller chart to get a more accurate entry. And then because I'm looking for reversals at those levels, we're looking at, okay, when the market gets down to this level, what is a good signal that it's gonna bounce? Well, first we have a downtrend going into that and we don't wanna bet against the current trend, right? The trend is your friend. You wanna stay with that until you see that it's starting to shift. And so the first thing I always do is see what that downtrend looks like. So some kind of downtrend with a trend line. And right here you can see a pretty clear downtrend and then it gets broken. And so seeing that downtrend break is a good first sign that, hey, yeah, this downtrend that we're going into this support level with that we might expect the market to bottom at is broken. And so that's a good sign that it's starting to find strength. And then from there, I like to see the market start to peter out. Like I said before, just because the market breaks that trend line does not mean that's right where it's gonna reverse. And that is not where I like to get in a trade. I like to wait for the market to come back 
and retest our level and then get in somewhere down here when the market has made a good candlestick pattern, giving us that final confirmation. For me, we start it with a higher time frame and then zoom in. So we start with a 15 minute, look and see where the market is, go into a one minute, look and see what the market's doing, see where the trend is. And then the last zoom in is looking at the candlestick pattern. So when you see a candlestick pattern down here, you can then jump in on a trade, betting that the market is going to go up. And then you can capture the move based on that. You can do this multiple times. And so the market came down here, bounced. You could have got an, you would have got a nice profit capturing this move here before the market did end up reversing and retesting. And when it comes back down here again, you can look for another signal. And how I would analyze that signal using the candlesticks is that the market has made a strong sell off into our support zone still. We're still down in an area where we expect the market to bottom and find strength. And so just because we got a move up here and it sold off does not mean that it can't do that again. And so right here is a very nice signal. The market kind of had some downtrend here. It's not as clear of a downtrend, but the main key here showing that that tighter downtrend that the market has been in right here is over is that you can see the market made a nice bounce here and then went into a consolidation mode. So a lot of the time market will go down, consolidate, and then choose a direction. And so how we choose that direction here is because we have this support zone down here. We're expecting to find strength. And then going off of reading the candlesticks is the market has actually made a double bottom here, which shows some nice strength. And then it shows a strong bullish bar off that double bottom. And then another one right here, making it, it makes a slight little retest or higher low right here. And that's how we like to get in thinking that the trend is starting to go up. The trend could start making higher highs and higher lows because it has made a double bottom. And if it makes higher highs and higher lows, we want to get in on that. And so this little move here is essentially that first higher low and a signal to get in on the market. And so I think getting long right here, buying based on this green candle right here, making a nice little reversal down here, giving that back up and closing at the highs right here, way above these last few candles. And so from there, you can get long, and you can put your stop below this double bottom. That is totally good. And a good initial signal is somewhere up here where the market initially found resistance. And from there, the market just kind of takes off and you would have made a really nice profit on this second swing up. So let's jump into an actual live trade to show you what it is like actually trading just using candlesticks. You do not need indicators to trade. All you need to do is know and learn what the candlesticks are telling you. And so just like we talked about, first thing I do is look at that higher time frame for a strong support level that I think the market might bounce off of. And then zooming into a smaller time frame is looking at the current trend because of course we don't want to go against the trend. But here we can see there's a pretty clear kind of downtrend going along. It kind of stuck here for a while and then it made a break. And then it's now starting to retest and consolidate a little bit. And so that's showing you that, hey, the downtrend is broken. It's starting to change a little bit. And that's where we want to look to get in on a trade. And so the last thing I like to do is, again, look for the market to make a higher low because that signifies when the trend is changing. And so right here, Order it filled. makes a higher low signifying, hey, that trend might shift. And so I jump in on a trade right there, betting that the market's going to go up. I like to put my stop loss below the extreme. So we have the extreme low of this downswing made right here that I put my stop below because, hey, if the market's going to keep going lower, it's probably going to break that low. And at that point, you know, it's going along with the if it's going to keep making lower lows and lower highs then I want to get out. But if we're right here, if we can choose a spot where it's going to shift from making lower lows to making higher lows, well, then we can get in on a reversal, betting that the market is going to swing back up like it just did over here 
previously. And so that is what I like to do. And so once the market kind of breaks in my favor and starts getting moving, I like to move my stop to break even because hey, sometimes the market doesn't play out how you like and it can come up here and just piddle off and then keep going down. But I don't want to get out of the trade too quickly because you know the market is just finding strength here and it could bounce and go up here pretty quickly. Now, because I like to use the swings of the market as how I read the market, well, I want to go with the uptrend in the market. And so that's where I moved my stop loss to. I moved it with this pullback in the market because that allows me to capture some of the profits as the market goes up. And then you can start to see I'm making an uptrend here to see, hey, the market looks like it's kind of bouncing like this. Once that uptrend breaks, I want to get out because, well, the trend is probably broken at that point and it's a good time to get out of the trade. And so that's how you can use price action to actually manage your trade in real time. I would suggest having a fixed profit target of just two or three times your risk at the beginning because managing your trade in real time is really hard. Now I do have a video where I go way more in depth into this strategy as a whole. So you can check that out for sure after this one if you're more interested because a fixed profit target will just be way easier. And when you start out, you really wanna focus on just your entries because finding the right entries is 90% of what is gonna make you profitable as a trader. And so as this breaks our trend line, I'm going to start ratcheting up the stop to capture our profits because of course we don't know what the market's going to do. I don't want to have it have the chance of swinging back lower and knocking me out. And that's why it's really just good to have a fixed profit target because it makes it a lot more simple and you don't have to be making crazy decisions in real time. Now, if you do want to learn more about the strategy, I do have a course that goes way more in depth into this stuff. And it comes with a community where you can actually talk with me while the markets are live and you can connect with like-minded traders. That is the biggest thing when it comes to learning how to trade is being able to connect with other people. A lot of people have found it very helpful to actually progressing their trading because when it comes to trading, just learning what the charts tell you in a strategy is only half the puzzle. Mindset and emotions and understanding how the market really works and plays out is the hardest thing to learn. And you can really only learn that over time. And having a community that helps you build into that will really, really help your trading as a whole. And so if you're interested in that, you can check that out in the link description below. Now, if you're not quite ready for that, I do have a video right here that goes way more into the strategy and teaches you more about the market.